Hey guys, it's Harley, and yes, I look a little different. I know a lot of people say they don't like it when I wear makeup, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? If you don't like it, I'm sorry. If you do, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, today I thought we would talk about the care of Peperomia houseplants. I know Peperomia are considered easy plants. Um, in my experience, they're not as easy as everybody claims. I have killed quite a few in my day. Once you figure it out, each plant, it's easy. You know what I mean? So first things first is the lighting, and the lighting is kind of important for these guys. So they do prefer bright, indirect light generally. There are some that prefer a little bit more direct light, some that prefer a little bit less light. So again, it just all comes down to getting to know your Peperomia variety. Most of my varieties I have here do prefer that bright and direct light and by bright and direct, I'm meaning an east or west facing window close to the window or a south window pulled back. So some of these I do have right next to east and west windows. And then some of these I do keep on my shelf back here pulled about 10 feet back from the south window so it's not too direct of sun exposure, but they are still getting enough light. Some signs that your peperomia are getting too much light is burnt leaves, crunchy leaves, discoloration of the leaves. What else, what else, what else? Those are generally signs of too much light and if they're getting too little light, you may notice their leaves turning lighter in color. You also also will notice on more variegated varieties, their variegation is kind of dulling, so they're reverting back to green. You may also notice more stunted growth, so the new growth is smaller or the new growth is occurring more slowly. So if that's the case, give it a little bit more light and it should be fine. Now the watering requirements are where I felt I was going really, really wrong in the beginning. The things I was reading about Peperomia stated that they liked the soil to remain moist. I have found that that is not the case at all. For my Peperomia plants, I have found that they are extremely susceptible to root rot. Their root systems are very fragile and like thin compared to other root systems. I do allow the soil to dry about 50% before watering them. So some ways you can test the soil, the soil. <laughs> Some ways you can test the soil to see if it needs water is A, the most important is to get to know your plant. You need to know how it feels when, how heavy it is, like weight wise, when it's been thoroughly watered as opposed to when it's getting too dry. So that'll just kind of come with time as you get to know your plants. Um, or you can stick like a skewer or orange wood stick into the soil and if it comes out dry, then it's dry. If it comes out a little bit moist, then you're probably good. I typically just feel how heavy my plants are at the moment. So this guy needs water. He's really, really dry. These plants will wilt when thirsty, and I have found that bottom watering these guys is the best option. They're very susceptible to root rot, but they're also very susceptible to stem rot. What I'll do is I'll just fill a little bowl or saucer with water about halfway, and then I'll just sit the plant in it and allow them to soak up the water. Once I notice the top of the soil is dampened, I'll take the plant out. This has worked really, really well for me, and this just helps prevent water from sitting on the top of the soil or on the leaves or on the stems causing stem or leaf rot. Another reason why I love bottom watering is this allows the roots to suck up the moisture from the bottom of the pot all the way up so they're not getting too much water and they're just getting what they need, you know? And then as far as fertilizing goes, I do fertilize these with an Espoma all-purpose fertilizer and I do dilute it to half strength and give it to them about monthly. So I will have the one I use linked in the description box if you're interested in picking it up for yourself. It has worked really well for my plants. Kind of along that same seasonal thing, they don't like the temperatures to go below 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit and they do prefer like 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically if you're comfortable, they're comfortable. Most Peperomia do actually prefer what? Most Peperomia do actually prefer humidity in the air, but they can also tolerate low hum humidity. I live in Utah, which is one of the lowest humidity states in the country, and my Peperomia do fine without it, so they do prefer it, but it's not necessary. For my Peperomia houseplants, I have found that they do prefer a well-draining soil, so I'll just use like a succulent soil mix. I'll have my favorite one linked below again, and I'll mix in a little bit of extra pumice and orchid bark to air it up a little bit. So they do like really, really loose soil. And again, that's because their root systems are extremely fragile and less compact, dense soil will lead to less root rot issues. There are many ways to propagate a 
Peperomia houseplant. My favorite, of course, is water propagation. You can take cuttings from the plant themselves. You can also just take leaf cuttings and stick them in water. I did these ones recently, so they don't have roots yet. But these guys will form roots at the base of the plant. This is a great, great way to utilize those leaves that may fall off for you at some point. Um, just stick them in some water and some bright and direct light and they will grow roots at some point. Just be patient. Or you can also take stem cuttings. So you can cut the top of a plant off if you want to and stick that in water and it will grow roots. So this is a pepperoni. I think it's called like a quad quadrillion. I don't know what it's called, but it's this guy. Really, really cool. You can see this one has some roots. I've had it in water propagating for a few months now, and the root system is pretty substantial. Great way to go. And then I do have a video talking about how to move plants from water to soil if you choose to go that route. So if you choose to go that route, I'll have that lit video linked down below. Everything will be linked down below basically. This is a really cool way, but you can just see the root system is very delicate. I love this one. I don't think I'm going to move this one out of the water. I think I'm going to leave it in here for a while. I really love the way it looks and you can see it's getting new growth, which is really, really cool. For propagation, you can also you can cut off leaves, you can cut off stems, you can stick them in soil or water. If you do stick them in soil, they do generally need a little bit more humidity in order to grow a new plant. You can also take a cutting off of a leaf just like this, dip the leaf into like rooting hormone and then stick it in soil as well and it will grow new plants over time. Or of course, you can just divide up the crowns of the plant. So yeah, I mean, lots of ways to get more free, free plants. <laughs> These are all the varieties of peperomia I have, I think. I went around my house and gathered them all up. So here I have a ripple. Um, I have the emerald ripple. I have my peperomia frost, a variegated obtusifolia that's starting to revert back to green a little bit. So I'm going to put them a little closer to the sun. Um, another variegated obtusifolia. Back here, I have my Hoffmanii. This one is really, really cute. I got this from Steve's Leaves. I love it so much. And then back here, I just have the regular green obtusifolia. So, oh, and then the Meridiana, I think this one is called. I'm sure I have some more floating around my house somewhere. There are so many Peperomia varieties. I've read that there's over a thousand different varieties of them. So you can collect them all. I've really been wanting a polybot polybotra, I think is how you say it. It's the ones with the really big raindrop leaves. I've also been wanting a watermelon peperomia. That makes sense. I feel like I've been rambling for 20 minutes. I don't know if any anything I've said has made sense. Um, oh gosh, there's so many that I that I've been wanting. I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Any comments, feedback, additional input on pepperoni care, we would all really appreciate it. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!